Good morning, PT on Ice. Get rid of my gum. Good morning, PT on Ice Daily Show. Happy Thursday morning. Thank you for joining us this morning. My name is Alan. I'll be your host this morning here on Leadership Thursdays. Talking about a little follow-up uh, from an episode we did a few weeks ago. Uh, just finished a little nasty uh, secret spicy imam next door of uh, bite calories and burpee broad jumps. Got this cool shirt. Shout out to uh, my friend Jen Rosa for giving me this U of University of Michigan Survival Flight shirt to wear. Uh, uh, love it. Um, so speaking of burpee type things, don't forget that today is also Gut Check Thursday. So today, uh, Gut Check Thursday, the workout is a, a retest of one of the original Gut Check workouts from almost four months ago, seven minute AMRAP of burpees. So as many burpees as you can get after in seven minutes. If you didn't record your score, or you didn't do this one when we did it a couple months ago, record it today so that you have your score to reflect on in the future. If you recorded it last time, um, look back to May 23rd for your score. Uh, that will help you set the pace and, and let you know uh, how much fitness you've gotten in the past few months, how, how good you have uh, improved. Um, so don't forget to hit Gut Check Thursday this weekend. If you're not signed up for Hump Day Hustling already, what's wrong with you? Get, get, get on board with the program. Go to ptnice.com, scroll to the bottom, sign up for Hump Day Hustling. Get an email in your inbox, once a week only, no spam, every Wednesday morning. Our top five articles that we've been reading that you think we think you should look at, and some social media posts as well. If making it out to a course isn't in the cards for you, don't forget about Virtual Ice, our online mentorship group, weekly sessions every Tuesday night at 8 p.m., 29 bucks a month, no commitment, cancel any time. If you hang in there for a whole year, we give you 24 CUs. So, so a good way to stay up to date or get up to date from your couch for a, a, a nice price point as well. So check out Virtualize. Last little thing here, we have uh, Fitness Athlete Live coming up here at home base here in Fenton, Michigan, September 21st and 22nd. I've got a couple spots left for that, I believe seven, uh, but fully expecting that course to sell out. So if you're in the Michigan Midwest area and you want to hit up Fitness Athlete Live, come up here that weekend, hang out with Mitch and myself, and we have Kelly, and we also have a, a, a new TA that's going to uh, be uh, working his first, for his first gig for us, um, Joe. So check us out that weekend. If you're going to be in Minneapolis this weekend at Modern Management Older Adult Live, I will see you there. I'm super pumped to fly out and, uh, and take that course this weekend. So let's get into this. Let's talk about aggressive management part two. Part two. So a few weeks ago, we talked about aggressive management part one, and, and we talked about you know if, if we are, are really practicing what we preach and, and what we believe is the right thing for the patient, then, then as PTs, as physios, we're probably needing to reframe and, and agree that we are aggressively managing musculoskeletal disease and pain and, and, and population health principles as a whole versus conservative management, which is try cortisone shot, try some pills, try resting it, try you know anything else. That is, is more conservative um, than, than what we're all about, about getting people moving and change their lifestyle and, and getting really aggressive with, with how we load and, and dose their exercise when they're in clinic with us. And so there's always this, this, this pushback to that, right? Like how aggressive is too aggressive? Um, we, we always hear the comment, well, that's, that's nice, but the, my referral sources will say blank. Um, and the first point I want to hit on is, uh, is to, to eat a little bit of humble pie and know that your referral sources, for the most part, don't know who you are, right? They have a sheet at their office with, uh, that the receptionist made up of all the physical therapy clinics in the zip code, and yours happened to be on there because it showed up on Google, right? For the most part, they don't know who you are. You may have some really well-established referral sources where you know, you know that physician, you know that surgeon, you know that PA, and that's cool, but by and large, for a traditional outpatient clinic, they have no idea who you are. They have no allegiance to you. They have no idea what you're doing. They just know you're in the same zip code and you go on a list and that's what the patients pick because it's the closest to their house or it's on the way to work or on the way home from work. So recognize that that if, if most of our referral sources don't know who we are, then it, it doesn't really matter if, if we're worried about offending them because they we're not on their radar. So that in mind as well, Every state now has direct access, right? Texas finally got on board for the big win on Tuesday, and, and it was the 50th state to grab direct access. So 
the, the strategy here with, with wanting to be an aggressive manager in your community is to go around. Uh, we get this question a lot, Mitch and I, when we talk about being really aggressive with, with loading and, and, and uh, incorporating high intensity exercise into our treatment plans when we teach uh, Central Foundations and when we teach Fitness Athlete Live, we always get the question, um, you know, what, what do you do about educating your referral, referral sources or how do you deal with pushback from your referral sources? And, and our answer is always, well, we just go around them, right? Cover and move. Just, just go around them. In Michigan, we have okay direct access. We have uh, 10 visits or 21 days. Um, and what that means is, is, and then we always get this question, well, that doesn't mean that insurance will pay for it. Well, you know, like screw insurance, right? I don't work for the insurance company. I work for the patient. And so what that might mean, what that might look like is that you might see that patient for an evaluation kind of pro bono, right? If they need a, a prescription for you to get paid for that evaluation, then, then take a risk, roll those dice. You still have the legal authority to see that patient for an evaluation, get that person in for an evaluation, show them value, build the bike for them, get them to commit to a plan of care. You have the eval done already and then fax it or send it with them to that person that needs to put their signature on it. Um, and, and work around it that way, right? Don't, don't wait for things to come to you. Um, go around that referral source, see the patient you're legally allowed to. It might not mean you get paid right away. It might mean you have to wait to submit those, those charges um, until the prescription comes back. But you, you get what you wanted, the patient gets what they wanted, right? So, so don't get pigeonholed into this idea that you need to sit in your clinic and, and wait for, for people to roll in, like go out and grab those people uh, when you meet them out in the community and they say they uh, don't have a primary care provider or they're not sure their primary care provider will, will sign a prescription for physical therapy, get them in for an eval anyway, show them value, get them, get them on board, and then send them with that evaluation, fax that evaluation, and, and get it signed that way. Yeah, it might mean a seven-day delay in payment, but, but everybody still wins, right? We got the job done. Um, and if you don't have a primary care physician, then send them to somebody that you know is, is, is uh, on board with, with what we think that's in the community. And if you don't have that person that you can send people to, get out in the community and find that person, right? You should have that person, that, that physician, that PA, that nurse practitioner who is, is, is practicing the, the way that you want to practice. So get out to health fair events, get out to the library, do some community stuff and meet those those other primary care providers in the community so that you can have them on, on the Rolodex and, and send somebody who doesn't have a primary care provider over uh, to get that evaluation signed, right? Don't, don't just wait for things to happen, go out and make them happen. Um, we, went, we had a, a booth at a health fair a couple months ago. We partnered up with the gym and we went out and had Health HQ and CrossFit Fenton at a, a health fair and we met an awesome nurse practitioner. She sees patients for an hour. She is all about lifestyle change versus pills and surgery and, and all that other stuff. Um, and so now that is somebody that we send evaluations to. We send folks who don't have a, a primary care provider in the area, we send them to her um, and, and we send patients her way. And so uh, establish that relationship, get around that, that direct access um, law that way, right? You can still see that patient. It might mean you have a delay in payment, but but go around those roadblocks. Don't just just stop at them and, and hope they go away on their own, right? So that's my first point. Find that find that person in the community. Find that holistic PA or nurse practitioner. Find that crossfitting physician. Find that triathlete physician, um, and, and send folks to them um, because we know they are on board with the way we think. Second point transitions easily from the first point which is don't be worried about making allies with, with people who are not on the same page, right? So the person that is still prescribing pills and surgery or telling people that a certain exercise or a certain type of exercise or a certain movement is bad because it's bad for the body or because they're too old or they're too injured is not a person we want to be allies with anyways, right? So don't worry about losing those people um, um, from your Rolodex. Those are, those are not folks we, we want to be on the same team with. Um, not only are, are folks who practice that way a little bit repulsive eth ethically and morally, but they're simply on the wrong side of the evidence and there's, you shouldn't feel bad about stating that. Um, you know, we're not trying to butt heads and, and talk bad about folks in our community behind their backs, but 
if you're still doing knee scopes for knee pain, you're you're way behind the evidence. If you're still giving um, pills for subacute and chronic pain, you're behind the evidence. Somebody asked this question to Jeff at a lumbar course a few years ago when we first started incorporating deadlift, and they said, "What do you say to a physician um, that sends somebody over for hot packs and diathermy, and, and you say, you know, we're we're deadlifting over here?" And Jeff gave a beautiful answer, and it's just like. Well, I would ask them where they stand on the evidence and what they think about all the clinical practice guidelines that, that should be following. Um, if you're not up to speed on the physician clinical practice guidelines, it says a lot of the same stuff that we talk about here, right? Uh, don't, don't give people knee scopes for knee pain. Um, you shouldn't be recommending pharmaceuticals for high cholesterol, high blood pressure, or diabetes. You should be recommending lifestyle management. So the, the conversations to have with those providers is what are your thoughts on your own physician clinical practice guidelines that say you should be recommending exercise and lifestyle management for low back pain, for high cholesterol, high blood pressure, diabetes, for chronic pain. Um, what, what are your thoughts on those? Why are you still recommending pharmaceuticals and invasive surgery and steroid injections when your own clinical practice guidelines from many years ago, some is as way back as, as 2013, say that you should not be doing that. Why, you know, can you tell me your thought process and, and, and what sort of evidence you have to support that you're still recommending pills and surgery versus what your clinical practice, clinical practice guidelines say, which is lifestyle intervention. And if we can get those folks on the same page and, and say, you know what, if you need a lifestyle intervention specialist, I'm actually in that field of medicine, so let me know how I can help you. But you know, that's somebody that is not practicing that way is, is, is not somebody we want on our team anyways, and, and that's okay. Um, not that you'll tell people not to see that person, but again, go around that person. Send them to somebody who is up to date on the, the research and is practicing with a lifestyle-focused approach. Find that person in the community and, and send folks to, to that person. Um, my third point is, is we always hear the complaint that you know patients come in and, and Maybe we've made a, a, a little bit of progress, covered a little bit of ground with them, but they come back and they say, my doctor said, my doctor said I shouldn't be doing this, my doctor said I need this injection, my doctor said I need this surgery. And this just goes back to, to what I talked about a few weeks ago, that if you really deliver value and you get folks to, to commit to, to aggressive management, to, to treatment with you, then you will become that person. You will become that doctor that that patient talks about. You will become the doctor and we'll change the script and we'll have people walking around saying, my doctor says my pain is because I'm asking my body to perform things above the capacity it has, but if I, if I exercise three times a week and get stronger and, and push my heart rate a little bit, I'll increase my capacity and my pain will go down and, and I'll actually be able to do more. My doctor said, there are a bunch of different ways I can improve my, my sleep and, and he or she gave me all these different things to work on for my sleep hygiene. And my doctor said that, you know, I don't need surgery, I don't need pills, I don't need shots. So that's, that's how we can get people to, to start talking about you out in the community. You can start to become that doctor when they say, but my doctor said. So when their friends say, I'm thinking about getting knee surgery, you know, we want those folks to say, well, my doctor said you could probably actually get rid of your knee pain just with some leg exercises. So, so think about that. Think about how you can become the, uh, the doctor in the my doctor said phrase. Um, I think my good friend Matt Lasko here at the gym who has done a complete 180 in, in his mindset of, of, you know, every time something hurts, what can I go do? What, who can I go see to have them fix my pain? And he's now unbelievably bought in, maybe on a psychopathic level, bought in to what can I do, what sort of things, what sort of movements, what sort of activities can I do to manage my own pain, not only to reduce my symptoms, but to reduce the risk that it comes back in the future. Um, and, and that's possible uh, to, to flip the script and have folks change their mindset from my doctor said I need surgery, my doctor said this can only be fixed with this medicine, to my doctor said try these five exercises every every third day for a week and I will feel better and improve my performance in the gym. So, so flip the script on the my doctor said. In addition to looking at your state practice act, what does it say about direct access? Can I legally see a patient and evaluate a patient without a prescription? 
99% of states is yes. Does that mean that you'll get paid right away for seeing that person? No, but again, there are ways around that. Find the ways around that, get those people in the clinic, um, and then find those folks out in the community that you can start referring people to when they're looking for uh, a PA or a nurse practitioner or a family physician to go see, and start making those bagels go the other way, right? Start, start making those folks seek you out and asking you to refer people to them Ideally, you know, if we want to become primary health care providers, um, we'll, people will come directly to us and, and they won't need to go to their family physician as often as they usually do. And, and we'll, you know, ideally, those, those providers will start wanting to see referrals come from us, which is the nice change of pace from how it's been for the past 100 years or so. So chew on that stuff. Chew, chew on, you know, not, not being concerned with butting heads or, or rubbing a, a other providers the wrong way and your referral sources and, and know that um, there are ways around that to still get patients in the door and get them the help they need and find those folks out in the community. Go go to different events, be out in the community, get outside of the walls of your clinic. Uh, we, we traditionally think health happens within the four walls of the PT clinic and, and that's that's not always true, right? A lot of health happens here but not all of it. So be out in the community, find those providers um, and, and, and send people that way to, to get that evaluation signed so you can start that, that plan of care. That's what I've got for you. Um, check out the website, ptnice.com, for courses coming up. we got a whole bunch coming up. We have a lot coming up in October online. We have a couple each weekend through the holidays, so check out all of our courses coming up. Zach will be on here tomorrow to talk about bench press mechanics, how to help folks in pain with the bench press, and some different ways to, to get people pressing um, without pain. So check out Fitness Athlete Friday tomorrow with Zach. I'll see you in Minneapolis if you're going to be in Minneapolis. Otherwise, have a great weekend, everybody. Bye. Hey, thanks for tuning in to the PT on Ice Daily Show. If you enjoyed this content, head on over to iTunes and leave us a review. And be sure to check us out on Facebook and Instagram at the Institute of Clinical Excellence. If you're interested in getting plugged into more ICE content on a weekly basis while earning CEUs from home, check out our virtual ICE online mentorship program at ptonice.com. While you're there, sign up for our Hump Day Hustling newsletter for a free email every Wednesday morning with our top five research articles and social media posts that we think are worth reading. Head over to ptonice.com and scroll to the bottom of the page to sign up.